Hello, hello. Let's take a look at rendering lists in React. So we're using the beta.reactjs.org docs uh, under the Learn section, and we're basically rendering lists. Now, to render a list in React, we can use the map or the filter method from JavaScript. Now, when I first started with React, I was like, map, what on earth is this? What are we talking about? Google Maps here? Uh, but map is basically just a way of going through an array, going through a list of items, and just printing out each one. And filter is a way of filtering that list to only print out the ones you want. So let's take a look. So, um, you know, we want basically to print out a list of items in a UL, LI, for example. And we can do that uh, by taking our data. So imagine we had a const people, so an array of people. And inside here is a, a list of, of people in this array. So to print that out, we would basically say const list items equals people. Right, this is coming from here, from our list, um, our array. And we're gonna say people.map, so using the map method. And in here we put person, an arrow function, which is gonna like just automatically return. And then we can put li, uh, person, li. So we're gonna return basically one of these for each item in that array. And then we just return that list items. So to see that here, um, this is basically it rendered here. Uh, which you can play around with. I'm going to show you uh, what's happening here. So I've called this is called people, and this is why we're doing people dot map, right? Now I could call this friends, for example, uh, and then I would have to change this to friends, right? So that's how they're connected. And I'm saying friends dot map person uh, with the arrow function, but I could call this. Normally, it's the um, the singular version of what you're calling uh, your list. So this is would be friend, right? And friend. Okay, and that's how they're connected. Now I could just use X, right? Um, which is, it works, but it's really hard to understand what's going on. And that's why it's much better to actually name it properly to the singular version of what your list is. Okay, cool. So uh, filtering arrays, if you wanna filter arrays, so say you have this list of people, and we've got an ID, a name, and we've got a profession as well. Um, so if we wanted to get a list of say all the chemists, uh, how would we do that? So we can use the filter array or the filter method for that. And uh, basically it's a function that returns true or false and returns a new array with only the items that are passed into it, depending on what that true statement is. So here we have chemist equals people. Now we're gonna use filter. So we got the filter. Again, person, the singular version of people. We can call it whatever we want, but person makes sense. Arrow functions, it's automatically gonna return for us. And it's going to return a new array that contains anything that is true here. So person dot profession triple equals chemist. So if anyone's profession is a chemist, it will return a new array with all the chemists. So we'll then have to map over that array, right? Because it's another array. It might only have one item, but it's still an array. So then we'd map over those chemists and we'd say uh, list items equals instead of people, we're saying chemists and we're calling this person, we could have called it chemist, but then kind of a bit strange. So let's call it person. And uh, and then we'll print out the image and the profession, etc., from all the people in that chemist array. And then we just print out our list items. So this is what it looks like here in the code sandbox. Um, we've got our chemists equals people coming from our data, filter it by person, person dot profession equals or triple equals chemist. And then we take our list items equals chemists. So we're going to map over each chemist. We're going to print out the image. And then we're just going to return um, that list of chemists. OK, nice. A couple of things to be careful of. Arrow functions implicitly return the expression right after the arrow. So here, it's just going to return everything. So you don't need to use a return. Great. But if you start writing a curly brace here, which people often do, or you might automatically do it, that's also fine. But if you do add that, you will need to write the, retur the word return. So just be careful of that. Uh, keeping list items in order with a key. So you might see this error in the console. If you get this error, you basically need to add a key. The key property will go in your list or on, yeah, whatever way you're printing out your array, it could be on a div and you'll, put in person.id, you could use person.name if it was unique, but you might not be named, might not be unique, who knows, but just make sure they are unique. Uh, so JSX elements directly inside a map can all, will call always need keys, so be careful of that. Here's an example, we've got our data, um, we're using the ID as a key, and then basically it's just in the LI, it's just adding the key, 
Okay, so it's as simple as that. Now, displaying several DOM nodes for each list items. So here, like if you want to print out more than one item, so here we've got a H1 and a P, um, inside the map, it's going to like crash and you're going to get the errors and you'll be like, oh, what's going on? So uh, you can use the word fragment. If you didn't want to put a div, you could put a div there or an LI. You saw the LI work, but now we've got a H1 in there, so that won't work. So um, you can put a fragment and the fragment will just disappear. So it's going to take your key. It's going to do what it needs to do for the list, but it won't render that extra div or that extra, you know, uh, HTML tag if you don't need it. So you can use fragments. Just make sure you import it if you're going to use it. And then it must, you must use the word fragment um, because you're adding key in here. Uh, it's the same, the short form is this, and we saw the short form in uh, previous videos, but if you're going to use something like key inside it, then you need to actually use the word fragment and not the short form. Okay, where to get your key? Uh, get your key from a database, uh, or you can uh, locally generate it with UUID. There's a link here you can click on. Um, keys must be unique among siblings. However, it's okay to use the same keys for GSX nodes in different arrays. Keys must not change. That defeats the purpose. They have to be key. They've got to be unique. So if you're going to re-render something and the keys change, uh, then that's a terrible idea. And you will have problems with order if you're kind of removing things and stuff. So just make sure you keep an eye on those keys. Um, so basically, don't do something like this. I used to do this. I didn't really understand like why this was not good. So do not do key equals mat.random. Uh, it will cause keys to never match up between renders, uh, leading to all your components and DOM being recreated every time. Not good. It's slow and yeah, it's going to give you problems. So make sure you keep an eye on that. Okay, cool. So it's time for challenges. I suggest you pause the video and go and check out the challenges yourself. If you want to hang on and watch, I'm going to try and solve the challenges. Um, might make mistakes because this key and filter and map stuff is, is pretty full on. Uh, let's see if we can give it a go. Um, challenge one is splitting a list in two. An example shows a list of all people. You've got to change it to show two separate lists, one after another, chemists and everyone else. And it gives us a, a hint here. Um, person dot profession triple equals chemist is how we're going to get chemists. So let's have a look. Uh, we've got our data, um, which is coming from here. And you can see we've got a profession, mathematician, chemist, etc. So we've got different people. And we're printing out all the people right now. That's great. But we want to list print out two different lists. So how would we do that? Um, there's our scientists. And we want to print out two lists. Okay, so we can basically just use um, the filter, okay, because we want to filter by a profession. So we can say const chemists equals uh, people, because that's where all our data is. And we're going to use filter this time. And we're going to open the brackets. And then we're going to say person. I'm just going to call it person. You could call it whatever you wanted. Um, I'm going to open the arrow function. So I'm going to return something. I'll just give myself some space. And then in here, I want person dot profession. We could copy it from above if we wanted to. Triple equals chemist. Okay, that's going to give us a new array of all the chemists. So I could literally then, I'm going to just going to do this just to show you. I could say instead of people, the list item equals chemists, and I should only get the chemists. I've got two people, right? So that is cool for now. That's pretty cool. And to get everyone else, we could say const, I don't know, everyone else equals people. We're going to filter those people. Uh, we're going to get a person back. And we want the person, oops, let's go up there, the person dot profession. So we basically want the opposite. We want everyone else. So we want not equal to chemist. Okay, so that's going to give us everyone else. And um, let me see, I'm going to do something really quick and dirty right now, I think. Yeah, let's just do, let's just copy this. We can do this a lot cleaner and a lot better, but just uh, for this video, I'm just going to do list items two equals everyone else dot map. And then we'll just uh, print out here a, another UL under here. Um, and we'll call this list items two again. Could be done a lot nicer. We've got all our people, and we can like even just put everyone 
that's spelt wrong, but you know what I mean. Uh, so we're splitting our list. Let me just scroll and you can see we've got our chemists and we've got everyone else. Aaron, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, so that's basically how you do that. Again, you can show the solution. You can see a, a nicer way of doing that as well. Okay, let's look at the second one. So um, nested list in one component. So we want to make a list of recipes from this array for each recipe in the array. Display its title as a H2 and a list its ingredients. So let's look at our data. Uh, we have a an array, a recipes array. And uh, inside it, we have an array of ingredients, a lovely arrays inside arrays. Nice. Okay, so how are we going to print this out? So we've got, let's just scroll up here so we can see what's going on. Um, Okay, so just before the return, make sure we're doing kind of things before the return. What we could do before, well, we could do it in here if we wanted. What are we gonna do? We're gonna um, basically um, get our list of, yeah, I can actually do it in here. We don't need to create any consts or anything. Let's do it here. So we're gonna say recipes. So we wanna go into JavaScript land, right? When's got my curly braces. And I'm just gonna put a new line. Um, we're gonna say recipes. I can never spell the word recipes, it's terribly hard word uh dot map we want to map over them okay and we want to take one recipe and we want to use an arrow function and then we want to basically return so we don't need to put the curly brace because we're just going to make some space here and we want to return uh we can just return recipe dot name for example and that will give us our recipes okay that's cool now um they basically said it should be in H2. So let's put it inside a H2. There we go. Let's have a look at here. And uh, H2. And what's going to happen now? Now we've got recipe.name, recipe.name, recipe.name. That's not what I want. So again, we need to like now go back into JavaScript land. So we need to like put this uh, curly bracket here. Now we're in JavaScript land. And yay, we got our hummus. I love hummus. Uh, Hawaiian pizza and Greek salad. Okay, cool. So um, now we need to print out the list of ingredients. So we need to print out a, another list. So what we can do here, now this is gonna cry at me in a second, but let's, let's, let's get some errors going and then we can fix them. So I wanna print out a list. So I want a UL, right? Let's prepare it for the list. And we're starting getting errors already. And it's like, ah, come on, what are you doing? And it's saying adjacent JS elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. Did you want a JSS fragment? So we can import the JSS fragment. Basically, it's saying like, I've got a UL and I've got a H2 inside a map. And that's like too much for me to deal with. So um, I'm just going to wrap it in a div just to keep it quiet for now. Uh, you could import the fragment and write it into the fragment. And there we've got, we're back to where we were. So that's kind of cool. And you know, this is a great place for now you to actually write the key. We could put key equals recipe.id, right? So now we're not gonna get any warnings in our console. Okay, beautiful. So now we need to print out our list. So inside our UL, we wanna say um, recipes, recipe, sorry, recipe.ingredients. And we wanna, basically map over that array. And we wanna say ingredient, difficult words here, uh, arrow function, that's the wrong, wrong one, there we go, arrow function. And we wanna return our ingredient. Right, what's that gonna do? Is it gonna do anything? It's not really doing anything. Oh my God, disaster, we've got recipe, we're printing out our actual map call. So what do we need to do when something like that happens? We need to turn it into the JavaScript world. So now, yes, oh my God, we've got tomatoes, cucumber, we've got one long word of what's going on, we've got to figure out. It's like, you know, at school when you've got to figure out what words are inside that big long word. So uh, we need to put it inside an LI. So let's do that, a list item. And now we have a list item, lovely. And now we've got, oh my God, we're printing out ingredient. So again, <laughs> this happens all the time to me. So just remember if we want, you know, we want to go into JavaScript land and get that dynamic data rather than the string ingredient. And there we have it. I don't know why it's a, a little bit um, small there, but you can see we got a Greek salad, beautiful. We got a Hawaiian pizza with pineapple and we got our hummus and that's it. Very, very cool. So there's a couple more challenges left. I'm going to leave you to do them on your own. And don't forget at all times you can download reset for um, the code sandbox. You can show hints and you can show the solution. Um, so yes, have fun and see you in the next video.